hello my blessed family how are you doing hope you are doing fine so god wants me to share this great testimony with you but before we continue god wants me to share this funny experience with you so we had this doorbell in nigeria it would say Tanan, is anybody home hey when we first got the doorbell, ha, I would shake when he talks. The sound of Tanan, I'm like, what? My heart would jump up. Tanan, is anybody home? Oh God. Later, I got used to it. Then, when we add visitors, oh my God, you should see their reaction. Like when they hear the doorbell, like it freaked them out. Like they're like, ah, oh, wow, what's that? You know, so. Like looking at them, it like it reminded me of what happened to me. So it was so funny. Like the house would be so quiet, and the doorbell would be like, "Tana, oh my God, is anybody home?" <laughs> like it was so scary. Also, we had a clock in Nigeria that prayed every hour. Hmm. Like it would start with somebody shout hallelujah, then to say a short prayer. I mean, when we first got that clock, hmm, it used to freak me out. Like, it would start talking every hour. Like, later I got used to it. Then when we had visitors, oh my God. <laughs> when the clock starts talking, hmm, my visitors like freaked out. Like, it was so funny. So, we actually brought that clock to the U.S. It scared the visitors here in the U.S. Like, just imagine, your guest is the only one in the living room, and you are in the kitchen, hmm, and the clock starts talking, hmm. First of all, they'll be like, what's that? Like, <laughs> like they won't know it's the clock, you know? They'll be like, who is actually talking? <laughs> like, it was so funny. We had to explain to them that, oh, it's a prayer clock. <laughs> oh, it was so funny. So now, anytime it was like getting to another hour, I was expecting the clock to talk because I got used to it. You know, it's great to have a clock that prays every hour and reminds you to pray. You know, like, have you prayed today? <laughs> Glory to God. So let's continue. So the very first church I attended when I came to the U.S., like i told them about porn masturbation how god saved me like reviewed some other things of my family they gave me this look they were like as if they were ashamed of me for revealing that in my mind i was like god wanted me to share it <laughs> and i obeyed god even my parents were so ashamed of me i was like wow so my parents they removed us from the church right <laughs> In my mind, I was like, God, please help me. Also, I was sharing the gospel when I was in school. And the pastor wife in that same church was like indirectly telling me to focus only on school and not share the gospel. Like she was like saying, I was so shocked. She was like, how do you even have time for school? I'm like, ah, oh my God. So in my mind, instead of, I was like, instead of her to encourage me, like she was saying how do you have time for school and post online i'm like abby you don't want me to post online me <laughs> so it's so it was so surprising that the people that you know the men and women of god leaders in the church pastors pastor wife you know the devil was using them to discourage me and there was this lady in that church she approached me she was like you are the reason your parents are no longer coming here i was like uh -uh. <laughs> just because i obeyed god like she was so wrong even my parents had issues while going to that church like they never liked the pastor and his wife like they used the opportunity to leave the church you know so now it looked like my parents left because of me but no 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 they've always wanted to leave that church you know, they were always complaining anytime we got home. Like, my dad was like, the pastor is not preaching the gospel. Like, was insulting him. He felt like the pastor was insulting him during his message. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, my parents did not leave the church because my sisters and I were in the choir. You know, it's so funny how people 
were so quick to blame like they don't know the full story they will just open their mouth and say it's my fault really hmm. no 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 my parents have always wanted to leave that church and they saw an opportunity using my name and they took it and they took us out of the church asap no, my dad would attend their events occasionally to act like he was on their side. No, no, no. He hated the church. Like, he hated the church and the pastor from day one. After the church treated me bad, anytime they had an event, they invited us. Like, my dad did not want to go. But because he was a people pleaser, like, what would people say? Then he went to the church. Like, it would make us go and start using slang like, as a family, we should go. As the head of the house, we should go, really. Hmm. Forcing us to attend a church God does not want us to attend. No, no, no. One day I was in school. After school, my dad was like, I should come to that church. They, are, they were having an event. So that church that he hated, really. <clears throat> also, that church that treated me really bad, like, and God doesn't want me to go there. So I was like, God, what should I say? And God was like, just say, okay, you know, but we are not going. So I said, okay. My parents thought I was coming. Never. So my parents, no, they don't take no for an answer. So sometimes you have to make them to think you agree with them. They make stuff later. So God taught now to trick, like, taught, like God taught me the trick on how to handle my parents. Because, you know, like, God will show you some tricks on how to handle difficult people, like people in your family, church, workplace, and so on. So I stayed in school and found an excuse not to attend the church event. Yes, that's how God saved me. Another time, I attended a praise and worship concert, and the singer that trained my younger sister on how to sing, that singer made me look bad, like saying it was my fault that... My parents left that church and she was just acknowledging my parents and sisters and she ignored me. I was like, wow. Recently, she was tagging me to, uh, to come to a praise and worship event to, um, to, <laughs> to further humiliate me more. Hmm. No, no, no. God is on my side. Like the moment we share our delicate testimonies, like expect rejection. Yes. Especially from people, like from people from the church even jesus was rejected yes like not to talk of us <laughs> god allowed me to go through like the porn addiction and taught me how to fight it so he can use me to teach others how to fight it like don't be ashamed of your past god has taken away your shame in fact anytime you remember your past be happy and say god saved me from that Ignore the people, ignore the church that rejected you. Yes, they rejected you, but God did not reject you. So instead of, you know, inst so what you should do is give glory to God that he helped you to get through that rejection. So I did like Jesus. I ignored people's rejection, focused on what God called me to do. Even the pastor of that church, like the first church I attended when I came to the U.S., he attended my twin sister's wedding on purpose to spite me, you know, to mock me. And he was looking at me to see if I was still okay after that incident. In my mind, I was like, Pastor, I'm alive and I'm okay. <laughs> Your rejection did not kill me. Your rejection pushed me to serve God deeper. Your rejection motivated me to follow the purpose of God in a deeper way. He was surprised I was smiling and dancing at my twin sister's wedding. Like he doesn't know that I have the Holy Spirit who is keeping me strong. Like his wife too, she like she was recently sending me messages as like acting like she cares. Like all these people that rejected me. Hmm. God told me to avoid looking at messages on social media they are just distractions like same for you avoid anything that will distract you you know and we'll continue in the next video